All right, there he is in the corner uh, that he found. George Ying, eight-year NBA vet from Cleveland. He is here, and we are going to start the show, George. First of all, thank you for the early time. Um, nicknames. Yeah. Minivan? <laughs> yeah. well, I, so that's a Donovan <laughs> Mitchell creation. Why? What, what is that? No, I mean, so when I was fighting my way to make it in this league, as we all know, uh, you know I, I, was, I wasn't in the rotation. I had an opportunity to get in at the end of the game, and I had, like, a wide-open dunk, and I went up there and, you know, kind of, like, <laughs> <laughs> laid it in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got to the locker room, and I think it was, like, Joe Ingles, Donovan Mitchell were like, well, what the heck was that? And I was like, listen, I know you guys are, like, Ferrari engines. Wow. I'm more like a minivan. I need a couple laps around the block. <laughs> I get the top speed. And then, you know, they're making T-shirts with my head out the window of a minivan. <laughs> I hate to say That's, it, Jordan. I mean, it's a, it, 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 it fits. Do you it's like fitting. it? It's fitting. It's, it's fitting. Has it turned into any sort of money-making opportunity for? I mean, there are a lot of minivan companies, I guess, right? Hey, let me let me tell you this. You you put some anything on a sweatshirt or a t-shirt and sell it. You can make some money That's these days. Point. It's a great point. A minivan company would love to get an NBA player yes. from Dorksville. We got We got to get you a minivan. Hey, we, we could cook something up. Right now. <laughs> we got to get, get you a minivan, brother. <laughs> okay, I love the idea of nicknames. Lemon Pepper Lou, which. Forever, we'll follow you. Yeah. Um, icy hot down there on the end. These oh, are man. these are just. Yeah. I think they're fun. Is there a best nickname and a worst nickname that you can remember? I definitely have the worst. Okay. That's for sure. <laughs> Fine. If I could, if I don't I could too much care for mine either. <laughs> nah, I don't. Yeah, mine isn't great at all. Yeah. Really, you guys? None. Of, nobody likes their min, their nicknames. Nah. The... I've had a couple that were decent. Okay, give me the ones you but do the, like. The icy hot one. No, I, was, I definitely hated that one. Okay, we hate icy hot. We're not yeah. gonna call you that ever again. Which one do you like? Um, when I was with Lakers, Deadshot was one. I mean, Green Ranger. Everybody goes by, like, your, your Instagram tag. Yeah. You know, we talked about Kelly Oubre earlier. You had the Tsunami Poppy situation. <laughs> um, so most people go by the Instagram tag, you yeah. know, which aren't, which isn't bad. Villain, obviously, Dylan Brooks. That one's yeah, good. Self-appointed. Um, you hate Lemon Pepper Lou? Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't represent a great thing. Yeah, you know, it, it represents a time in the bubble where things didn't go well. I think it's legendary, <laughs> quite frankly. It's, qu it's legendary. All right, yeah. well, who is somebody who has a nickname out there? It could be an old one, too, that really stands out. Ooh. I like the Slim Reaper for uh, Kevin Durant. That's a good one. I thought that was... Ooh. I, I really like Slim Reaper. Yeah, Reaper's good. Yeah, very fitting. There's one that comes to mind, the best one I like, but people don't know about it. I used to call this play... DeLon Wright, I used to call him Frozone. Frozone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like that. If you see him and look at him oh and my how he God. used to play. That's hilarious. Yeah, he, he kind of, he would like ice skate on the, like he That's always. That's hilarious. I like that, actually. Strides, his, he had strides. On or Shams, because I feel like we need a good one for Shams, too. Although I, the internet has given him some, Shams. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, to follow <laughs> uneasy up, you guys went three and one. <laughs> you guys went three and one in group play. You guys didn't advance in the in-season tournament, but... Uh, I'm sure you wanted that 500k. So how disappointing mm. was that, um, and how bad did you guys want that money? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it was frustrating when you saw how we were playing the last game against Atlanta, trying to get to beat the point spread. It makes you, you know, wish you could go back into games one or two when you had a team down 20 <laughs> and the coach subs in, you know, and you and you give up the <laughs> lead. So, don't get in, I don't mean, get it's trouble, just a George. whole different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I mean, I'm just being completely honest. I mean, <laughs> you, uh, trouble. <laughs> you, uh, you're just, you're trying to get to the point where you could play in Vegas for a lot of money. And uh, the point differential thing kind of makes it hard to adjust, right? You're so used to, you know, preserving your superstars and, you know, not trying to, you know, overwork them. But at the end of the day, you need to get to a certain point amount, especially if you've lost games early in group play. So if there's one thing you could yeah. change about the tournament, sorry, Sean, to cut you off, what would you change, George? I mean, I think through group play and everything like that, it's actually been pretty smooth. There wouldn't mm. really be anything that uh, I would change it. Maybe, you know, give six teams in each uh, <laughs> gotcha. so we can get a chance for this money. But other than that, I thought it was pretty smooth. I think they did a great job, especially for just, I don't want to say coming out of nowhere because we've heard about it for a couple of years now, but I thought it was pretty, you know, well run. Uh, some of the courts were pretty hilarious. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a good, it's a good job. way to describe it. 
Yeah, gee, in, the, in that Hawks game, the Hawks pulled their starters uh, down 20. You guys left your guys in trying to get that point differential. Was that awkward for you? Were you guys uncomfortable? Heck no, it wasn't awkward. I'm <laughs> I'm I thought that if someone's going to give you an opportunity to continue to beat them, you want to take that opportunity, especially, you know, with the point differential. Um, it made you think back, you know, to whether, like I said, whether it was Detroit or whether, you know, you know, we could have had a better ending to the um, Indiana game where do you not foul and just play it out and only lose, if you're going to lose, lose by four rather than fouling and lose by six. It just adds a whole different dynamic and excitement. And I can't wait to see what this week does, you know, definitely with the games I uh, think tonight and then in Vegas. I, I, the, the, the courts thing, I know it's, it's like such a stupid topic, but it is a topic that comes up every time. We can't help it. I know. It's, well, <laughs> as the viewer, that's all we see. But as a player, I mean, it, does it bother you guys at all? Has it been just sort of something to laugh about? The Indiana one, I thought we were playing the Indiana Cookie Monsters because that was <laughs> the, the craziest court I've uh, ever seen, and that was our first look Oof. at it. Um, but some of them, I don't even know who's, like, usually when I turn on the TV, I can see who's playing, but some of the courts, I have no idea who's playing. Yeah, actually, ooh, that one. Um, but I think it was a good switch up, and at least... <laughs> You know, the fans know that, you know, the game is meaningful when that court is on and it's an in-season game. And I think the NBA did a really good job. And obviously there's room to grow, but I think this is a great, you know, head start on this. G, you played two seasons in Philly. What was your favorite part about playing for the Sixers? Um, I, you know, you can never underestimate being able to, you know, go out there with some of the two best players, you know, to ever play this game when you say, you know, uh, Joel and uh, James. And then obviously, you know, the type of fan support, what if I was good, bad, or indifferent, <laughs> you know, they're going to let you hear about it. Nice. I, Danny can attest to that too. <laughs> and then, you know, just being surrounded by, uh, you know, a solid group. I mean, you had young talent with Tyrese, DeAnthony, um, you know, even Paul Reed is, you know, up and coming, you know, so just being surrounded by, you know, those guys playing in Philly was uh, was was great for me. It, it, it jolted my career to a new spot, and, and now I'm enjoying my time in Cleveland. It's crazy. Didn't even mention me. Well, didn't mention playing with me, George. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I thought I, you were going to say the best that. times I had was playing with, with Danny. And, I didn't know, want to do that because then people are going to be like, this guy's fake, and, you know, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. We appreciate your genuine uh, so answer. Honest. But it, uh, you I know Danny can speak to it as well. The ball, you in the corner, and it was a three. Yeah, man. We had there great you know. times together. You know, dead shot. Yeah. Green range. I, I'd love to hear both of you guys talk about the Philly fans, though. Mm. How do those fans compare to Cleveland fans? Danny was just in Cleveland. How do they compare <laughs> to Jazz fans? Like George, how how do Sixers fans really compare to those fans? I'll tell you a story. When I first got to Philly, it was, I think it was a, a preseason game, and I, like, pump faked and dribbled to the side and dribbled off my foot, and it went out of bounds. And there was some dude in the stands that was like, what the? <laughs> we didn't bring the ball. Shoot the ball. And I was like, wow, this, this just got real. Different they are one of a kind. They are, there are no fans like them in the world, um, but you got to love them. And they have gotten better over the years. I, I will say that. My first stint uh, was rough, but over the years, they have gotten a lot better, and they've become more welcoming. Uh, <laughs> to the teams and have chosen different routes <clears throat> instead of booing us at times when they could have boo booed us. I, I appreciate the Philly flame. I'm, I'm actually glad that I, I spent my first eight years in Philly because uh -huh. it taught me tough skin. Tough. It get, yeah, it gave me an opportunity to learn what the NBA is really like. Very tough fan base, but I tell you what, you do your part, you will forever be legendary in Philadelphia. I've actually been in a restaurant after a loss and they walk over to your table like, why are you, like, what are you doing? Like, go home. Uh -huh. Y'all just got beat, bro. Like, why are you, you outside? Meet? Yeah, like, <laughs> you shouldn't be human. You should you know? not eat after a loss. That's the type of fan base they are. But if you do your job, man, they will love you forever. So I can attest to the Philly, Philly fans. I mean, if you watched the Eagles game yesterday, they're, they're crazy. Um, you and Joel Embiid are close. But when you first got to Philly, he said, I used to think he sucked. <laughs> uh, how did you win him over? Dang, what is this, a roast? My <laughs> goodness. There's good information. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think if you know Joel, Joel wants to be surrounded by guys that, you know, know how to play and, and can keep their defenders out of uh, his way. So 
<laughs> After making a couple threes, I think, uh, you know, I gained his trust and uh, we had a real good relationship from there on out, you know. Um, I think Joel puts a lot of pressure on himself to be great, so he expects it, you know, out of everybody else on the court. And uh, I don't want to say I was lucky enough because I work at it, but if you can make enough shots and keep guys out of his way, you know, he'll trust you. I know Danny can attest to that. He'll even walk up to you, I think, after you miss a shot and be like, I need you to make that three. I need yeah. you to make <laughs> nah, just... I think that's Joel's take on everybody when they first get there. Really? And then if you make a couple shots, he, he will start to like you. And uh, he will put some pressure on you to make some shots. The first thing he'll say to you, if you make shots, you can stay on the team. You know? <laughs> no pressure. Uh, you, also, you also went to his wedding this summer, um, and I'm sure it was a beautiful ceremony. It was very classy, <laughs> very nice, but you got to tell me about the after parties, man. What was the wildest thing you experienced at the after party? Uh, wow, you know, there's some things we'll keep disclosed, but, you know, for, sure. for the most part, I mean, at, at the after party, I remember I was listening, you know, to Brian McKnight and I was recording, you know, Joel and his wife, and I'm like, dang, this is, and I zoom in, I'm like, holy smokes, that's Brian McKnight. <laughs> <laughs> he, was actually, he was actually at the wedding. I was like, I'm not, I don't really do a bunch of cool stuff like that, so that was probably, you know, the coolest part. Um, and then to see, you know, all the coaches and people that I've impacted, you know, Joel's life, you know, from um, Bill Self, Arn Tellum, you know, wow. Leon Rose, all those guys. You know, it, it's it's amazing that Joel st still keeps, the, you know, those contacts and uh, they they care deeply about him. We know how he is as a competitor. What's he like to party with? You know, I don't think he does it often, but when he does, he... Uh, he does it big. <laughs> he does it like the MVP, that's for sure. <laughs> Gee, this is the second time you're playing with Donovan Mitchell. How has he improved since those Utah days, and what have you seen in his growth? You know, I think the biggest thing is uh, when Donovan was in Utah, I think he was just so athletic, he'd get anywhere on the floor and, and do whatever he wanted. I think now he really realizes where his spots are and has really turned into an elite you know, three-point maker, whether it's contested, wide open, catch and shoot. Um, he's really turned into an elite, you know, three-point maker, and I think he knows wh where he wants to get on the court, where Utah was kind of like sure. figuring out where I could get. I think he knows his spots and where he wants to get. And uh, I think he's ultimately, you know, grown in the point guard position, whether it's getting his teammates involved uh, early so that late oh, yeah. in the game uh, yeah, he can take there, over. Um, oh. and, and he does an elite job at that. Was your familiarity with Don the reason why you chose to go to Cleveland? Was it one of the reasons why you chose to go there? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I think when you leave a place like Philadelphia, you want to go somewhere where you ultimately can feel comfortable and, you know, know what you're getting yourself into. And uh, Cleveland definitely, you know, offered that up. You know, and then and the another thing that was exciting for me is they have such a young core group that, you know, obviously I want to win, but they've proven that they can, you know, win and get to the playoffs and I want to see how long they can drag this thing out and signing a three-year deal knowing that there's a young core here that you know we will have a chance to be good for a long time. Uh, George I want to just apologize ahead of time I feel like I'm getting the bad questions for you today but uh, here we go. All right. Is it true that DeMarcus Cousins once called you a Teletubby? <clears throat> Oh yeah, you heard about you heard about that. <laughs> Why am I so, getting yeah, yeah. all these awful questions? You know, this, yeah. I thought you actually liked me, but you know, <laughs> I do. Like, I don't know why we got here. We have bad, we have bad rapport. It gets but better. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Just, uh, shut up, Lou. <laughs> yeah, like tell, um, I mean, the trash talk. It, it's fun, but tell it to me. No, I mean, you know, I think Lou and and Danny can attest. There's some stuff that you know you that just gets set on the court and he wasn't playing was with the Warriors. I was a, it was like my second or third year in the league. Nobody had heard about me. I'm a, you know, well proportioned. Well -proportioned. <laughs> uh, it's a great way to put it, and, George. Well proportioned. Yeah, and I was out there and I missed a shot and I think he wanted to like, you know, rattle my confidence. And uh, <laughs> so that's what, what he was saying. Let me tell you this. I was avoiding that corner by the, the Warriors bench like the plague, though. I was playing that guy. Was so it worked. Corner. Yeah, don't go up. Has anyone ever said anything, called you anything? And this, for all you guys, that, that made you actually laugh? Uh, yes, for sure, 100%. Really? There's a lot of things. Oh, George Danny. was called 
Danny, Danny, Danny's a culprit of this too. And now that we're a teammate, he's a snake. When we were in the bubble, when we were in the, we were in the bubble he liked to run up and down the court, and the whole Lakers bench would be calling me like Baby Duds, Baby Jared. Dudley. He was calling Baby Duds, Baby Jared Dudley. Um, when I was in Philly, we used to call him, but we were teammates, so we didn't ever tell the other team. But we would make fun of him, call him some funny names. I won't put it out there because people might oh, start trolling you on the internet. But uh, yeah. we had some funny, some good funny names for George. I like some from uh, Sesame Street. I mean, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> some some characters from Sesame Street. That uh, is bad. Yeah. Does it? Do you do homework? I mean, to try. To, in the past, there have been some good moments from certain guys that they did a little homework and they they dug extra deep. Do you guys do that when you come up with no, trash? No, I'm not <laughs> one of those trash targets. We have a couple guys come through the past that have done homework, but we weren't with yeah, those types of trash targets. deep. Yeah, no. Yeah. All right, fair enough. I, by the way, George, I am sorry. I really had so many nice questions to ask you about your hobbies and things you like to do, and then I just got the roast question. Yeah, we so. put her up to it. Forgive us. Oh, no, no, I'm sure Danny would probably had you do something like that. But next time, next time, <laughs> next make time, sure get some good ones. We appreciate Talk about the time. My By the way, good luck the rest of the way. We appreciate the time. Thank you so George, much. Before you go, she had <laughs> one more for you. <laughs> I mean, the last one, I'm, I'm so glad we're not, we didn't get to. So we're, we're out of time. Really? We are out of time. Gilbert Arenas, <laughs> not this time, buddy. You're not getting us. <laughs> Thank you so uh, much. Good luck, Brody. Run it back, returns. Appreciate you guys. <laughs>